So after that recent video, we can't expect a bit more stuff for the global side of Lancaster. Even me now knowing a bit more stuff about Patricia. Of course, there's some stuff that I came to realize and hopefully fully understanding as to how it should be with these global update videos. She's a magic attacker that's part of the Empire, Princess, Mythical Faction that's a mage unit. Her talent, the higher her HP is, the more damage that she does. After dealing damage, she inflicts Soul Burning Plague on the enemy 3 times with a certain chance each time. What this talent debuff does is that at the end of action, does fixed damage and gets dispelled first, which stacks 5 times for 2 turns. At first, it may not sound like notably amazing. You may see this character as like another generic debuff machine like Theon, but that's where her other kit comes into play. One of her unique skill is a single target that does more damage for each debuff on enemy up to 30%. Rain soldiers attack with you, then applies a strong debuff after battle. Very hard hitting skill, since she can apply so much debuffs. So it should be no trouble scaling that off. Also this reaches 3 blocks long with a 2 turn cooldown. So that's nice. Her other unique skill, if her HP drops below 30% and skills is not on cooldown, it triggers the effect of the skill and puts it on cooldown. What the skill does is that it dispels 2 debuffs on her, heals her, and reduces all her skills cooldown by 2. Really amazing. She can take care of herself that can even be used on her teammates. That sounds crazy when it says that it's only on herself, but she is able to use it on her teammates thanks to her 3C. It's a support that makes allies in range have plus 1 mobility for 2 turns and applies flame protection. It makes you immune to mobility down and apply 1 stack of soul burning plague to enemies before battle. If the ally with this buff dies, Patricia deals fixed damage to the enemy that killed them and that debuff cannot be dispelled. Flame protection lasts for 4 turns then gets replaced with another skill for 3 turns. The second part of the 3C has a passive where if using a skill, enemies with at least 3 stacks of her talent debuff or allies with flame protection will be considered to have a range of the skills within 2 blocks around them and her ranged soldiers attack with her. This is an AoE that attacks 4 blocks around her that applies to debuffs then heals allies who have flame protection. So a big correction that I do want to make is that passive right there. I thought it increased her range in general but nah. Think of this range similar to Sagani's owl. He can attack from where that owl stands so that he doesn't have to close in and attack himself. That's the same philosophy with how her range works. Allies who have flame protection or if the enemy who has 3 stacks of that talent debuff but I'm gonna just say flame protection because it's a lot more easy to understand it that way. Allies with that flame protection acts like a walking bomb for Patricia. Probably the best way for me to describe it. It's even better to anyone who has a revive so they can go in recklessly and still live long enough for Patricia to pop off using like her 3C or her single target skill. So she can literally be at one side of the map and still be able to attack on the other side with the help of an ally. And the funny thing is that with the support skill is that she can even use it on her allies but that's if they have flame protection. So she's able to become like a niche healer, even able to lower skill cooldown. Overall, she's a support DPS that can really pressure opponents. She can even apply so much debuff to the point where it was in stacks can disappear in an instant. So yeah, her range is incredibly strong, offers good support and healing, able to hit really hard who can give her opponents a very hard time trying to stay alive. PvP, she's gonna be phenomenal. Regular content, she will feel pretty generic without her 3C. And even then, there's better magic attackers out there for you to use. But if you really want her or really need a magic attacker, then go right on ahead. She's part of the Empire and Princess faction, two really strong teams for her to be in. For her bonds, she will need Roland for a defense bond and her banner partner, Goon, for the attack bond. And he himself needs Patricia for his defense bond. This guy right here, Loki, I thought he was insanely good. Yeah, you can really see it, like it's insane. But if you watch gameplay, he's kind of disappointing if you really look at what's going on. He's a physical attacker that's part of the strategy, meteor, and yieldless faction that can be demon or infantry. His talent increases damage and heals based on damage dealt. At the start, he gets moon wolf power that gives him plus 2 mobility and gets a revive. When he revives, he gets lone wolf revenge to replace it. When initiating battle, he can attack twice and will not be counterattack and has a 100% reduction in reflect damage. He cannot be healed by other allies and if above 80% HP, he loses the effect then gets moon wolf power. Each time Lone Wolf Revenge gets removed, his self healing effect gets reduced. That will stack, and none of the above effects cannot be immunized and be dispelled. All that looks crazy, am I right? Like you're looking at that and you're thinking to yourself, wow this guy is OP. But that's not all that he gets though. He has even more insane stuff that he can do. 
He has a unique single target skill that teleports to the enemy within 4 blocks in a straight line. And if there's no enemy within 1 block, then it stuns before battle. He has another unique 2C, which is an AoE. It teleports him to any block with 3 range that attacks in a 2 block span. It disables armor or defense drop in PvE for 2 turns that heals him for each enemy hit up to 60%. He has this really amazing 1C that gives him Terrain Master in his first form. In his second form, he gets to ignore class restrictions. His 3C has a passive where if he does a normal attack, he reduces all his skill cooldown by 1. It's a single target that spells 5 buffs before battle on the enemy. After battle, does fixed damage equal to 25% of their lost HP and gets a command where all enemies within 2 blocks, the lower the enemy's health, the lower their mobility is reduced up to 3. Then when that happens, they cannot guard when the mobility effect is active for 2 turns. The requirement to lower mobility starts at 70% to lower it by 1. I'm not sure at the second requirement, I think it's like around 50% to lower it by 2. Then at 40%, it caps out at minus 3. So having bust through tanks, and if he lives, he can take anyone out. But getting out of that HP threshold is quite easy to use if they have like capable healers. So look at Agoon. This guy has some amazing stuff. Like it is insanely OP. Strong damage output, self healing, very good mobility that complements with his skill range, besides his 3C. Has Terrain Master with a ridiculous second transformation that lets him hit even harder and attack safely. Oh, I forgot that he does have multiple revives. Yeah, that's a thing that he can do. As long as he heals above 80% HP in his second form, he reverts back to his first form. Then he has a revive again. But that does cause a huge problem later down the line if he dies too much. Because in that second transformation, he cannot be healed by any healers whatsoever. He has to rely only on himself to help stay healthy. It's fine if that happens like one time, but it gets progressively worse. Not to mention that this guy has horrible survivability. Like that revive is the only thing that's helping him with that issue. So yeah, now I really understand why people don't use him. Dude has some crazy stuff, but he gets severely punished for coming back alive. Like this dude wants to be like a one man unit but won't be able to handle anything that gets thrown at him. Even when he does revive, he only heals a quarter of his HP, so he can easily get 2 tapped from fixed damage. In regular content, yeah, he'll be quite good. Like, really amazing. Even being your best attacker. Factions aren't great for like newer players, but at least he's very self-sufficient. Just buff him up and you're good to go with him. In PvP, unless this guy gets buffed by either like getting an exclusive or a casting skill, I wouldn't bother with him unless you want to feel like underwhelmed with his performance. Two new soldiers, and surprisingly only two this time around, or actually I think these are like the two last soldiers that we're getting, until maybe the 6th anniversary. First up is a mage, it does magic damage that has 30% increased attack. They take fixed damage towards himself, but when they attack, they will deal 150% fixed damage when at max upgrade. But don't freak out, it's only on the enemy soldier. Yeah, the first time I saw that, I nearly freaked out too. Even if it's for just like on the soldiers only, that's still wiping them out entirely. Unless they have like fixed damage immunity. The second is an assassin. It's a weird one. To put it in simple terms, they basically heal a certain number of soldiers back when you lose them. Which I really don't like because when it comes to assassins, they don't really care about surviving. All they want to do is just go in and go for the kill. So yeah, typically, you're not exactly trying to live. They're not really built for living. With the exclusives, we got a helmet for Glen Shield. When fighting an enemy with a lower mobility, she attacks first. Before attacking with the skill, if the enemy mobility is down, then the cooldown of the skill is reduced by 4 that has a cooldown of 2 turns. Broken. Just, just straight up broken. If you have Glen Shield, get this thing. It's basically a full refresh that happens very frequently. They honestly should have made that cooldown a 4 turn, because that's just OP. Like the fact that Glen Shield is a very good character herself, and just gets an insane buff because of this, it's ridiculous. Like I honestly don't mind it, somewhat, but like, the cooldown effect is the only thing that I have an issue with. Next one is an accessory for Elise. If there's a guardian key within 3 blocks of her, her damage increases. When actively attacking in battle, if the enemy is on the guardian key, then she stuns them before battle. A good way to punish them, as that's literally the counterplay against her, just blocking those key tile. With the casting skills, first up is Alma. Her mirror light lasts one turn longer and gains an additional effect that allows more extra healing. Really good to grab. Alma kinda has like a AOE healing problem, but that mirror light buff is very valuable to have. Second is for Juggler. At the end of his turn, if all his skills are on cooldown, the talent healing triggers and all his skills cooldown are reduced by one. Juggler is always using his skills, and they have a high cooldown too. 
So with this, he won't be entirely useless. Third is Provincing. When he triggers his talent A weak death effect, he applies a damage taken increase debuff for one turn. It's good to help his teammate to follow up for more damage. Lastly, we got Sonya. All stats increase by 5%. At the start of battle, she gets her talent buff, and her 3C debuff lasts an extra turn longer. Would have liked it if her talent buff lasted longer, or if she can get like another stack instead of her 3C being a thing. For the interesting banners, there's gonna be a red up for Roland, which he isn't like anything crazy, it's just that you want him to unlock bond. Patricia needs him for a defense bond, even Nemia needs him too, if you have her. So now's your chance to do so on the second week of the update. A custom banner that goes up to two remote and the leaves, and a custom equipment banner that should appear on the third week. Then, a free multi summons one time every day for 7 days. So we'll get 70 free summons in total when the update goes live, but it's only on the standard banner. As for the content, we get more Ragnarok challenge stages, chapter 4 part 3 of the portal leap stage, more daily chances for the secret realm, and we might get the event for more daily rewards, but it's hard to say with global because they're unpredictable sometimes, because Sien got it, and possibly even the energy in casting stages all available. But those two, it seems like we get them like every once a month. When you farm dailies, you will get an event currency to exchange for rewards. You might get this 14 day login event, and on the third login, we get a weapon bag. This event to pick up an equipment for free by playing a flipping game to build up points. Actually, I think this is to compensate for the login event that has the weapon bag because, because the weapon bag was a thing for CN for Thanksgiving. So I think we might get that instead of the login. This new feature, which is my first time seeing it, I didn't notice the first time. Like, I didn't even know that CN got this. I might have missed it or something. So I'm pretty sure that you can do some farming on the Anarchy training ground in Dragon Stages, but how it works exactly is that you are able to set up your team, start the battle, but you will be able to leave that stage to do something else while that battle is still going on. So for example, you can farm Anarchies while at the same time maybe do some Apex matches. It will use the same usage as a continuous battle, so just be mindful of that. A nice little change, if you miss the extra daily rewards in the casting stage, it can accumulate to the next day repeatedly. So if you miss one day for the dailies, on the second day, you will have 101 out of 99 weekly chances. That does reset weekly. Then lastly, the Endless Voyage, which they didn't mention. It makes me sad. What I'm really hoping is that they forgot to add that in the notice or something. Unless they mention it on the second week, because I want this event back. For the skins, we got the Echo of Light for Patricia and Goon. They went with the classic swimsuit for Patricia. Nonetheless, it looks really nice. Goon is pretty sick. Isn't he supposed to be like a werewolf? If so, like where is his fur? Instead of fur, this dude got like armored up instead. With season 16 coming to an end, the champion skin for Grenchil should release somewhere around in this update. And with season 17 approaching, Anna's gold skin and the Redeemer Soldier skin will be available. The skins for the art characters have been fire. Like they've been killing it. I really hope they do it for all of them. Then, a Machalotta skin for Gits. I do plan on getting this. One of my most proud characters that I ever built, and I think this skin looks really nice. Plus, I don't have a skin for her, so I'll be quite satisfied. Alright, so that was everything, if not most of everything that Global should be getting in this update. I'm gonna keep it short and say that you can totally skip these characters. Because in the next two major update, we got the Guyver Cloud coming next month, then after that one is the 5.5 anniversary that has Ice Melda, who is really insane. Like, she is OP. Like, if there's a character that's worth pulling for in this update, I'd say Patricia, mainly in PvP. She has that long range pressure with great support. If you are more focused on regular content, especially for the newer players, Goon is really friendly to use. I'm kinda excited to try out Patricia, and I'm really surprised with the free multi summons too. I hope they do more of that, at least for like special events. And I'm really begging for the endless voyage comes in this update. I'm always excited when that comes around, and seeing CN get this in this update, and Global not mentioning the endless voyage, made me a little bit upset. But I still have high hopes for it on the second week. It's that one event that I always look forward to. I think you guys know how much I really love that event. But that's all I got for you guys. Feel free to let me know down in the comments how you guys feel about this update. Are you guys pulling for the new characters? Or if you're planning on saving for the next two major update coming up. Like people were talking about saving for Guyver. A lot of people really excited for Ice Melda. What my plans are? I'm trying to get all of them. <laughs> you know me. Pull for the characters. Make videos on them for you guys. That's how I am. Even though there's like a few characters that I'm missing out on. That I did not make a video on. So uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. Your fellow, Z.